could have been whiskey. Welcome, this poor guy. Welcome to the Beer Talk Radio family. Yeah. This baby. is this is how I do, motherfucker. Yeah. I smoke weed. Like yeah. I smoke weed. Well, this is a great time to do it. Man. I smoke weed. I do other stuff, but not much. Not too much other stuff. <laughs> so you're just supposed to smell, smell the it? coffee beans. Mm-hmm, oh that'll reset. One of my favorite smells in the world. That's going to reset. I do it all day. That's going to reset your olfactory senses. Mm. Olfactory, big olfactory. word. Olfactory. Can yeah. you define that? <laughs> yes, I can. Okay, so gestation is is um, chewing, tasting. Mm-hmm. Olfactory is smelling something. Let's keep moving on. So let's keep it. Let's keep up with the Joseph James. Now yeah, we have. I feel the, like there's a third eye element to all of this tasting too, though. Like, yeah. I don't want to get so woo woo, but like, get woo woo, woo uh, woo woo. Yeah, That's yeah. how we say woo woo woo. Mm-hmm. Get woo woo woo. I mean, it, all of these things put together that I was just like looking at the checklist of what I had to describe, and I'm like, all of these things put together, it's like there's this other place. There's this it's other in place your heart. Are, yeah. That's yeah. where it's it's in your heart. Yeah. It's in your heart. And what I talked about in my last episode, specifically when talking about olfaction, is how certain things can get triggered. Talking about triggery. Hashtag triggery. <laughs> triggery. Triggerations. Triggerations. Mm. Talking about triggery. Triggers. Um, just talking about how every sense, every smell, every aroma is specific to your region and your upbringing and how you grew up and the smells that you had um, embedded in your brain as that's a little so child yeah, and so how that affects your preference. And I think maybe the reason why I'm not an IPA drinker is because I simply do not like anything that's bitter. And it took a lot of years for me to enjoy bitter foods. Mm-hmm. But I think Part of that is just the fact that I grew up on on a very sugary, salty diet, as most Americans do. Yeah. And I talked about this in my last episode, how people from Asian countries don't grow up on as much sugar as we do. So that's why maybe their preferences for beer might be a little bit more bitter than yeah. ours as Americans. But all of that is changing. Yeah. Because ever since probably about 8 to 10 years ago, when the IPA, like when... When, uh, when Beer Republic came out with their Racer 5 IPA mm-hmm. and the branding was so good. Very strong. Because that triggered a lot of childhood memories for a lot of people. Now, you and I are very young, but we're not that young. We're still lucky enough to be born in the years that cut us off from millennial versus Gen X. Yeah. So me and you are still technically Gen X. Mm-hmm. For us Gen Xers, we grew up on a lot of anime. I don't mm-hmm. know if the younger yes. kids do. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, honey, we're I going there. I don't oh, we're take going my there. shirt off on podcasts Oh, often, we're going there. But when I do, <laughs> I show off my Come Vampire here, Hunter D tattoo. Come here, Hannah. <laughs> Come here, Hannah. You need, to, you need to help him with this one. Yeah. Great comment, Hannah. So, yeah, that's... Um, Come here, girl. And people get might look at that. Get in the picture. This is Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Hi. Hannah. So people might look at that and be like, whoa, what the hell? Didn't your tattoo artist know what he was doing? So this was an original concept sketch uh, from the storyboards for Vampire Hunter D, which uh, is possibly the greatest anime ever. Nice. Bloodlust is cool, too, the the reboot that they did in the 2000s. But, um, yeah, I have to thank, like, shout out to all my fucking AV Club boys. Like, um, my, my story was I was an athlete. I was, um, you know, captain of the football team, but also a captain of the varsity quiz team. Okay. So I was like, you know, the, the nerd. The nerdy jock. The nerd Lance Harbor. Okay. You know, Lance Harbor from Varsity Blues. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, so yeah, um, I got deep into the anime. What happened was it wasn't even Vampire Hunter D the first thing I saw. The first thing I saw was Akira. Okay, I mean, okay, that's a lot of... Aki Red yes. is amazing. Yes. And I heard they were going to try to like do a live action version of it. This which, does melt fast. That's kind of like, oh, I know, right? That's a melty ice cream bar for sure. That's all right. So then after that, I saw uh, Ninja Scroll. Okay. And uh, Basilisk. Okay. I think it might have been... Basilisk might have been fairly new at the time in like the early 2000s, but oh my God, what a gory anime. But... 
all of these things were cool. I loved Samurai, read uh, Samurai Code, uh, Art of War, all that stuff that helped me tremendously in my life. Get those books. Um, or just watched Forrest Whitaker in a beautiful underground um, uh, movie called Ghost Dog. Oh, I know, I know, I know, yeah. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, I can hear the soundtrack. RZA produced the soundtrack. But oh, getting back to beer. Back to Sorry. beer. Sorry. All right. I so know. I'll go down the rabbit. What hole. I w- yeah, you're in the you're fucking way yeah. far down I'm in sorry. the rabbit hole. Stop. I haven't even smelled this yet. I know. Hold on. All right. Let me finish my fucking sentence, please. please. Thank you. Um, so what I was gonna say for those of us who actually are old enough to appreciate, um, God, what a fucking name, uh, Guy Mafuni. Mm. Appreciate what the fuck? Uh, here he comes, here comes Speed Racer, he's a demon on wheels. Yes. So that's why Racer 5 was our first IPA, it was our first uh, craft beer brew for a lot of people because we remember the nostalgia of um, Guy Mafuni and, and, and um, Speed Racer and we grew up on that, like my dad put me on to fucking Speed Racer when I was a little ass kid. My shows are even older than yours. Mm. I loved the Giver. So, Ooh. not MacGyver. Okay. okay. And I have a completely yeah, yeah. separate story about Richard Dean Anderson, which <gasps> well, I'm not going to tell you right now because you don't know me that, le- well, that well. <laughs> but when you get to know me better, I will tell you that episode. Okay. Or, uh, I'll make it into an episode. Okay. So, the Giver. Uh, one of the first anime films that I saw when, as a young kid, they made like a a live action version of it, of it which sucked yeah. Yeah. but um, when we talk about branding when we talk about business if there's any way that you can get licensing to link up with a very popular cartoon or something that's pop yeah. culture you definitely want to try to do that if you have the budget as well, a bigger company a lot of people don't realize that licensing is not that hard to do Ooh! so um, I mean the barrier to entry is the price tag um, but uh, I know several startups um, that literally started in people's dorm rooms for printing backpacks, t-shirts, these types of things, um, where they signed these licensing deals, but because of the nature of the business, they were able to go get a loan at a real brick and mortar bank. Okay. And they started little Facebook t-shirt companies and backpack companies and stuff like that. And um, the return on like, because you know, they're having a third party print these shirts and ship them. Uh, the return, like, they were able to pay back their loans inside of six months. Easy. Um, Listen to the expert. Let's yeah. smell this beer. Yeah, I don't know why I've never done it. Oh, honestly. now this is really citrusy. Okay, okay let's read with, okay. Ooh. Yeah, tasty, right? There's like, a little pineapple, too. Yes. So you're blankly staring at this beer and thinking, hey, how hoppy can it really be? Just take a sip and you'll find out. Huge aromas of pine, grapefruit, and orange. That's it. Pine, grapefruit, orange combine to form a big juicy resin bomb for your senses. Let the waves of flavor surf across your mouth. Breathe deep, drink in, and enjoy the ride. Is it getting dank in here or is it just us? Go in there. Get in there. I think you're going to be an IPA drinker by the end of this episode. I think my face is already starting to itch. Ah, no. Get in there. It has a very similar mouthfeel to their other brew. Real smooth, huh? Yeah, very smooth. Um, Not overpowering at all. No. Um, The bitterness scale on this is a couple notches up Mm -hmm. from the last one. For sure, for sure. Um, Let me put the cans together. I mean, so okay. this one is way more bitter. So so like branding, like can we again? Please do. Okay, so if your business logo isn't a giant picture of your goddamn business name, you're doing it wrong. Amen. Now, now I love I love this dog. I love this dog. It's great. We haven't gotten to the dog. I know, we'll get there. <laughs> Very cool for people like me, but like this is how you do marketing. This is marketing. Amen. Amen. 
One of the things that we talked about when I interviewed uh, Orlando Martinez of Hangar 24 Brewery was talking about oh, the branding. Cool. Yes. That's yeah, awesome. See, I didn't hear that episode. That's because you weren't paying attention, Dan. All right. <laughs> Fair. See, they, see, the problem is, is that these guys don't vet me. It's not that I don't vet them. They don't vet me before they come on the show. But I that's not necessarily that's cool. not necessarily a bad thing. But, yeah, uh, talking about keeping your logo really big, keeping exactly the name of your – I'm sorry, not the name of your beer, the style of your beer. You want to keep that really, really big because you have to understand you're competing on a shelf Full of other beers that are the same price, or maybe within or one or two dollars. That's true. Um, they all have great financial backing behind them. So how are you going to stand out? And the thing about the consumer is, you have to be very, very specific, and you have to let them know what the fuck they're drinking. And th that's what Joseph James uh, branding is good at, and that's what the uh, Hangar Twenty Four company yeah. has completely changed over their branding concept into something new that is a lot more easy to read and easy to speak to the consumer. Yeah, I always um, cared for Hangar 24's branding. They're uh, oh, uh, yeah. See, party foul. That's okay. That happens. It happens. Um, I, they're out of Redlands. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been there several times. Cool. Literally, like, in airplane field. That's what they're all about is aviation. Yeah. So they've rebranded their they they've rebranded to go from like the pinup look yeah. and the classic vintage no, look no, I think to it was go a to good the look. to the I I it was incredible yeah. artwork. Yeah. It was fucking fantastic artwork, but at the end of the day, they need to sell beer. Mm -hmm. And if people are looking at a picture of an airplane as opposed to knowing whether or not this is a porter or something else, that's right. what they had to fucking yeah. get, make the decision. And it was a hard decision, I'm sure. I bet. Because for over 10 years, they've had this beautiful vintage World War II pinup graphic yeah. um, image. And they had to let go of that to go back to their roots, which was aviation, whether it be vintage aviation or modern aviation. Mm. Yeah, I, it was a good decision. I've seen the new cans and bottle labels. Um, it was a great decision. Um, but yeah, I agree with you because of how much emotion they probably have tied up into that original imagery. Because it, it was beautiful. Was, That's why. Right. Sure it was, was good artwork. artwork. Yeah. And, and, and it worked for the time and the place, but now there's something else. Going now on they need to the tighten industry. it up. Yep. And the thing is, too, now they're not just, they're not just selling to California. Mm -hmm. And in California, people like creative stuff mm -hmm. they like they like artwork and shit yes, so indeed. it's different whereas now they're expanding into the arizona market or they have expanded into the arizona market and so you got to be a little bit more straightforward with what mm, your yeah, beer yeah, style yeah, is and stop trying to make people guess what the fuck you're selling 